Bitcoin matters. In this episode, we're talking all about Azteco, a voucher service that aims to revolutionize how the world purchases Bitcoin. Let's start with the what question. What is Azteco? Azteco is a Bitcoin top-up service that works exactly the same way that telephone top-ups work. So in telephone top-ups, you go to your local corner store, you can buy $10 worth of airtime credit, and you get a slip of paper with a 16-digit code on it. You put that 16-digit code into your telephone, and then in a few seconds, you have airtime and you can make calls. Azteco is exactly the same, only instead of airtime being credited to you, you get Bitcoin. So on your phone, you'll have a Bitcoin wallet like Samurai Wallet, for example. You'll go to one of our outlets, buy an Azteco voucher, take the voucher code, redeem it in our website directly to your Bitcoin address. Three seconds later, you get the Bitcoin on your wallet. That Bitcoin shows up in your wallet balance in the same way that your telephone top-up credit shows up in your balance. There's no difference between the two. We've taken a tried and tested and well-understood method of delivering credits to people's phones and transposed it to Bitcoin. There's no learning curve. Everybody already understands how to use it. And if you've never redeemed a voucher to top up your phone, all it takes is one experience for you to get it forever. Okay, why is it important for customers to be able to purchase Bitcoin easily? This is a very important matter for Bitcoin because Bitcoin needs as many users as possible getting onto the rails as fast as possible. If we want to build a huge global ecosystem of Bitcoin businesses and Bitcoin users, we want to on-ramp these people as quickly and simply as possible. That's why tools like Azteco are crucial. Also because we're dealing with a new type of economy where small amounts of money can be sent back and forth between phones and between phones and applications, what we need is a method of getting Bitcoin into the hands of potential users so that they can spend Bitcoin and also send it between themselves. The applications that Bitcoin can be put to are very, very numerous, and we'll only know what the best applications will be when everybody's using Bitcoin and we can get a big picture of how it's being used on a massive scale. The way to get Bitcoin used in a massive scale is to get people onto Bitcoin with relatively small amounts of Bitcoin. Bitcoin isn't about moving millions of dollars across the world, although obviously it can be used for that. It's about also moving small amounts of money between individuals and individuals and shops. And so we're making that happen by making it trivially easy to buy Bitcoin. The reason why mobile phones are spread all over the world is because the method of topping them up was very simple. In most parts of the world, people don't have access to credit. They don't have mobile telephone accounts where they pay monthly. They pay as you go. This is exactly the same with Bitcoin. There are 4 billion people on earth who don't have access to financial rails. Bitcoin can become their financial rail if we make it easy enough for them to get it and to use it. So the analogy is one to one. Getting access to mobile phones and being able to pay for airtime through vouchers and people without bank accounts and access to banking rails, being able to use banking through Bitcoin delivered to them through vouchers. So services like Coinbase or Cash App require you to submit some form of identification. Why are they wrong about that? It isn't necessary for somebody to identify themselves to be able to buy telephone credits. And Bitcoin is no different to a telephone credit. There are 4 billion people unbanked who don't have the means to identify themselves. And many of these people have access to telephony and they can make calls all over the world. And also they have internet access via these handheld devices. So... If we think about Bitcoin in the correct context, that it's just another form of database, it's another form of top-up, then it's clear that in order to get these people on board, we can't ask them to identify themselves. And also we shouldn't ask them to identify themselves because it's not necessary to the function of Bitcoin. There's no reason for people to ask for this. The only reason why it's being done is because people from a particular culture have decided unilaterally that Bitcoin is money. And in that culture, it can be argued that what they're saying makes sense. But in other cultures where there are different assumptions about how people operate, 
the way that these companies do things is not appropriate. And so we have a situation where if everybody is forced to obey the opinions of a very small minority of people in New York and the United States, there will literally be billions of people put at a disadvantage for no technical reason. Bitcoin as a technical solution to a problem is here right now and can serve all of them, especially now with the Lightning Network. So we must not allow the thinking of these limited imagination, insular and parochial characters to stop us helping people get onto the rails, expand and extend e-commerce to them so that they can participate in economics in the same way that people in the West do. This is part of what the revolution of Bitcoin brings to the world. It's a new way of accounting for money. And also, it has many other great advantages that come as extra added bonuses. For example, the elimination of payer fraud. With Bitcoin, payer fraud is abolished. That means you can accept a payment from somewhere in the middle of nowhere in the third world and be absolutely guaranteed that the payment is legitimate. This is a fundamental breakthrough in how things are done. So we must be very careful about how we think about Bitcoin, and people must be very careful and wary of superimposing their own local ideas on people in foreign countries. Your local ideas and ways of doing things are applicable only to you. And in fact, in Bitcoin, sometimes those local ideas are extra legal and against the United States Constitution, but that's another story. If we're talking only about banking the unbanked and getting those people onto the rails, it's important that those people operate by their own standards and not by the standards of foreigners. And furthermore, if you're for Bitcoin, you should be absolutely opposed to anything that slows down the spread of Bitcoin. We should all be on the same side when it comes to this. We should all be for the spread of Bitcoin into every conceivable corner and every possible device. So not only does it become more useful for everybody, but it becomes so entrenched that it can never be removed. This should be the goal of all Bitcoiners. So you cannot be for Bitcoin and for KYC AML and the New York stroke American thinking when it comes to Bitcoin. You've got to treat it objectively. You've got to think globally, not locally, and treat Bitcoin by its nature. That's what we do with Azteco. That's why we've constructed this service in exactly the way we have, with the correct assumptions and not the wrong assumptions. Okay, can you describe the process of how a person goes about using Azteco services? What does the process look like for the customer from start to finish? Okay, so what a customer does is they go into their local corner store or supermarket and just in the same way that they ask for an iTunes gift card or an Amazon gift card, they ask for an Azteco voucher. Now they can buy one for $15, $20, pay cash, and then the cashier will issue the voucher for them. That has a 16-digit code on it that they take to the Azteco website, input it, paste in their Bitcoin address, and then in three seconds, they get their Bitcoin. There is no other step. It's as simple as that. When you put an Azteco voucher next to an Amazon gift card, for example, you'll see that they're identical, except that one is printed on plastic and the other one is printed on paper. That's the only difference between them. They function identically and both redeem into closed networks, which Bitcoin is. Okay, so what markets will Azteco be launching in? Azteco is going to be starting in the United Kingdom, where we'll be opening a string of outlets. And we'll use those outlets to fine-tune the system. Once that fine-tuning is done, we'll clone the whole system and duplicate it jurisdiction by jurisdiction. So we're looking to expand into Europe first, and then from there, out into the rest of the world. We've had applications for vendors from literally all over the world, and they're coming in at a steady pace now. So it's very likely that you'll be able to find one of our outlets and buy an Azteco voucher for yourself. So... I think our listeners would be dying to know, but is it possible to get a sneak peek at how Azteco actually works? And can they try it for themselves right now? They can't try it for themselves yet, but really there's nothing to look at. 
If they've ever redeemed a voucher for either iTunes or many of the myriad services out there, they already understand how Azteca works. The only difference being, instead of being delivered credits for another service, they get Bitcoin. So it's no different from any of those services. That's one of the beautiful things about Azteco. There really isn't anything to experience. It's actually very dull. We want to make getting Bitcoin dull. We want to make getting Bitcoin boring. We want to make getting Bitcoin a very ordinary experience that doesn't have any mystique about it. It's mundane. It's run of the mill. And that's when we know we will have succeeded, where everybody treats Bitcoin no differently from making a phone call. When we reach that point and our market penetration is absolutely enormous, then I think the, the effects of what Bitcoin is going to bring to the economy will start to manifest themselves and everybody will wonder how they got along without it. Once we get our funding round closed, we can accelerate every single thing that we've been working on. And one day you'll wake up and find Azteco in your local supermarket and life will change forever for you. Once Azteco launches, how is that going to affect other Bitcoin exchanges? Well, first of all, Azteco is not a Bitcoin exchange. So what we're doing is very different to Bitcoin exchanges and doesn't overlap with them at all. What we're doing is consumerizing Bitcoin. We're simplifying Bitcoin. And so exchanges have a role to play in the global Bitcoin market when you're talking about very vast sums of Bitcoin and people who require custodial services and all of the services that Bitcoin exchanges offer. In the same way that you can get different services on the internet, different services will exist on Bitcoin. It's one big network that you can interface with using whatever software you can imagine and then develop. There's no one correct way to interface with Bitcoin. There's no one correct way to deliver it. Think about it this way. There are many services online that provide videos for people to watch. One of them is YouTube. Another one is LiveLeak. And the other is Vimeo. And of course, there are many others. Each one of these services provides a different spin on the service of delivering videos to users. They're separate, distinct, and have their own characters, but they all have one thing in common. They all use the internet as a transport to deliver videos to the viewers. Similarly, Bitcoin is a base layer upon which you can build many different applications and serve people in a way that you think that they need to be served. There is no one way to use Bitcoin. There is no one correct way to do anything with Bitcoin. It's up to your imagination and your skills as a developer to be able to devise and construct a service that suits the market and then take the consequences of that. The consequences being vast amounts of money pouring into your system, pouring into your coffers because you're serving people correctly or not. Okay, so Akeen, final question. What sort of impact do you think Azteco is going to have in the future? I think the best way to answer this is to look at it in terms of other businesses, other internet startups that have changed everything. My go-to example is Uber. Now, there was a world before Uber and there's a world after Uber. Uber has changed the way people think about taxis and the way they use taxis. It's a highly disruptive, super unicorn idea. And Bitcoin via Azteco has the potential to do exactly the same. If we manage to onboard, say, 500 million people onto Bitcoin, this will jumpstart an absolutely huge global economy where people who were not on the rails before and could not use e-commerce are all of a sudden on those rails and also using Bitcoin between themselves. This is not an unrealistic goal and it is very achievable. Let's look at the numbers of WhatsApp. There are 1 billion WhatsApp users. There's no reason why we can't achieve 500 million Samurai wallet users, all of whom are onboarded via Azteco. So this is the kind of thinking, this is the kind of goal that we're, we're reaching for. We want to be a very substantial, very large Bitcoin delivery business, helping people get onto the Bitcoin rails in a way that's trivially easy to use and that anyone can understand. Once we do this, the way we think about Bitcoin will become the default and it will change the world because we change the perception of Bitcoin 
while simultaneously onboarding hundreds of millions of people and creating a whole new economy where payer fraud is eliminated and anybody anywhere on the earth can pay for something using only their mobile phone. And when you think about it, this actually isn't very ambitious when you think about the other huge mobile phone applications that have changed everything. We're simply applying that thinking to Bitcoin. And the only way to achieve this is through a system like Azteco, which removes all of the friction and allows people to access it in a form they already understand. Thank you for tuning in to Bitcoin Matters. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube or a review in the iTunes store. To learn more about Bitcoin Matters, please visit us at bitcoinmatterspodcast.com.